Hello everyone, this is Dr. Will Horton and today I'm going to be doing a little intro on how to change a relationship with social media and the internet without any pain. This is one of my most favorite topics because if you have intense feelings of guilt and pleasure when you're on screen or if screen time and using the internet, things like that, is interfering with other activities, engagement, or your family, you might need some help. And I'm going to tell you a few things that might change how you look at this as we go along. Now, my goal is always your success. So what makes this different? What makes us so different when we come to looking at this, right? Well, you probably dream of an addiction-free life, correct? You know that you want to be the person that you know you can be. And maybe that's not glued to the internet, not glued to your cell phone. You know, you, you want a different kind of life. You, be, you want to be free from the Facebook fix. You know it can be done. Other people have done it. And maybe you've tried in vain. You try to control, switch, avoid time. You do all these things that don't seem to work, but you always go back. It can be done. Now, I've led many, many, many people to a life free from addictions, alcohol, drugs, gambling, you know, sex, and recently, the internet and or social media. So why do you fail? Well, let me tell you, first of all, I've done a lot of things right when it comes to doing this, especially lately. But I also have to admit, I've done a lot of things wrong, and I'll share those with you because I don't want you to do those. So after 35 years of being in this field, I've discovered that you know, treatment in general for the classical addictions, alcohol, drugs, things like that, has not changed in 60 years. So I changed how I treat that aspect. And, and when it comes to social media, it, it's an uncharted territory. So they're trying to do things that just don't work. And I'll explain why. And usually a one size fits all is not good, right? Now I discovered this the hard way. Now you get to cheat and get the easy way, right? And so as we get ready to get started, so what's the hard way? Well, most people try in vain to stop. They try willpower, I'm not gonna do it. They focus, I'll focus on something else. Uh, the, the, or if they go see a professional, unless it's someone like myself and there's only probably a handful of us in the world, uh, they'll use the traditional addiction approach, which is a big fail. That's what I did when I first started doing this. And it wasn't until I had a client that basically woke me up to what we really needed to do to get people to make changes. That's why I'm so excited about sharing this with you. So what's the easy way that stops your desire to overuse media? Uh, well, first we got to do, you know, I got to tell you in the past, I used the traditional treatments and it failed, especially with social media. Much like on the uh, classical addictions, I had alcohol and drugs, I was finding that the traditional treatments were failing more and more because the clients are different. This isn't the 1950s, 60s, and 70s when traditional addiction and treatment approaches were developed. This is, you know, it's 40 or 50 years later. You have a new clientele. You need new treatments. I had to learn the truth about all addictions. And then when I got into social media, I really had to learn some different things. Uh, but results are not typical. You know, if you need additional help, seek it now. I will tell you, I'm a certified master addiction counselor. That's an MCAP. I'm a member of the American Psychological Association. Uh, I'm a master hypnotist and NLP trainer. This is not meant to replace any medical or psychological treatment. That's the legal things I should do every time. Now, it's not your fault, right? What I really want you to realize is it's not your fault, right? Um, you don't know what you don't know. What worked in the past may not work now. And there's some hidden secrets you need to know if you want to overcome this problem or if you know someone that has this problem. Because this is new territory. And new territory requires new maps. It requires new ideas. It requires a new way. That's what's so exciting about this. Now, there are three secrets why you're stuck. Number one, you're set up to fail. Number two, what we know about social media addiction is wrong, and it's based in your neurology. And number three, why you have to change from the inside out. That's the secret, right? And most people don't know how to do that. So number one, we're set up to fail. Why are we set up to fail? Well, you know, Facebook is only about, I don't know, a 15-year-old company, and it's one of the most valuable uh, companies on the face of the earth. Why? People are using it. Do they want you to get off the social media? No. They may say they do. They may do this. And there's a reason why you always hear like 
you know, some of the people that own the big tech companies, Facebook, Google, uh, uh, I mean, the uh, I've heard, uh, and the list goes on, the guys that really set it up and run it, maybe they even invented it, they don't use it that much, right? It's kind of like you can own a bar and not be an alcoholic, but your best clients are alcoholics, right? You can be a dope dealer and not do dope. That, and you know, all the dope dealers I ever treated over the years, they'll tell you, you know, they got in trouble when they started tasting their own product, right? And then boom, so you're set up to fail. They want you to fail, you know? Uh, they, they, it's just amazing, you know, how much money they spend to keep you stuck, right? Because the longer you spend, the more ads you click on, the more revenue they generate, right? Secret number two, the truth about addictions. What we know is wrong. I'm going to go into this in detail in a few moments. And the third secret is you have to change your inside, redo your relationship with social media. So the first one is people profit from your pain. That's what, when I said, you're set up to fail, right? The system makes it so. It's an instant fix. If you were going to design one of the best addiction things, this would be it, right? Instant feedback, a little bit of disassociation right? So you could log off, right? You, you, it's a false connection. You feel like you're really connecting with these people. You know, I have 3000 friends. Do you? No, no. These are people that, you know, you don't know from Adam really. Uh, but it's an instant fix. It makes you feel, you can either make you feel and Facebook is beautiful and all social media, Instagram, Twitter, and all that. You can make yourself feel like a hero, only post good things in your life. Or we see many other people go the other way. I'm a victim and they show you all the bad shit in their life. Either way, it's an instant fix. If you post something good, you know, you're making people jealous and you know, they, you get those, Oh, I envy you and this and people love it. Or if you post something bad, Oh, I feel sorry for you. They don't know you. Do they really feel sorry? for you? No, not really, you know, but it's an instant fix because that's a drug-like response. When you get it, boom, you'll get, we'll talk about it in a moment, you get a dopamine and a serotonin and an endorphin boost. And that's, you know, it's generated internally, not like alcohol or drugs for those addictions, but it's, it's powerful. And again, we got to realize there's profit from your pain right? And these things are targeted to your weakness. Any of us that's ever played on social media know all you got to do is search one website. And the next time you go to back to Facebook or Instagram, there'll be an ad or Twitter, not so much, but Facebook and Instagram, there'll be, or LinkedIn, there'll be an ad. And you know, how did they know I was looking at Corvettes or, or whatever? It's, it's a weakness. It's like, boom, we're going to feed it to you. And then you almost feel like you're in sync with the system, right? And what are some of the examples of this horrible ex uh, thing that we call social media addiction? You begin to destroy relationships because you, you begin to value the relationships online more than the relationships really in your life. And the other bad thing going on is we're passing it on to a new generation. When I first started talking about this, people were, yeah, it's such a bad problem with like the kids. And I'm like, yeah, that's true. And first I bought into it. You know the truth? No, it's people in their 40s and 50s that are some of the most addicted to social media and Facebook. They can't get off of it. In fact, you know, some of the younger people, they don't do Facebook. There's other things that they do. I will admit that. But it's like, no, it's become intergenerational and we're passing it on to the kids. Younger and younger people are beginning to experience this phenomenon. <clears throat> so I was there. You know, my story when it comes to traditional treatment, I was in and out of rehab. I had a couple years sober. Uh, you know, I was going to meetings and therapy and everything that they suggest. I just couldn't get it. Uh, I just couldn't get my handle on it. And then I found something hidden that made everything make sense. The 12-step program, the therapy I was doing. And once I got that, my life started to change. I always say it didn't just change, it saved my life. It gave me a life worth living, right? And I had to begin to fight for the next 15 years to try to bring these new ideas into traditional drug and alcohol treatment. And I will be honest with you, uh, hasn't really worked taking it into the big treatment centers yet. Why? They're going to do what they always do. They're just stuck in what they, there's money in it. There's money in the rehab shuffle. There's money, you know, they're not updating the information. And so, uh, you know, I began to change because I brought a different approach into social media. And what it was when I first started working with clients that were, were asking me about it, 
you know, I'm trying to think about it. And, you know, traditional alcohol and drug treatment program is you go abstinent. You can live the rest of your life. I haven't had a drink in almost 36 years. Um, some of my friends longer, you know, same with drugs. You can live the rest of your life, never drink, do a drug, smoke a cigarette, gamble, uh, uh, you know, if, if sex even if you had to, or it's, my joke is, or get married, that kind of tapers it down. But it, if those are, those are things you can never do again and your life will go on, right? But really rapidly on, because I do a lot of hypnosis, I began to you know, help people lose weight. And some people come in, I'm an addict, I'm a food addict. And I'm like, well, maybe, but you got to eat. It's not like, you know, I, you, it's not like you can never, uh, you could never drink again, but you got to eat at least once or twice a day just to stay alive. So what I began to realize in that, and I do a lot of info on that, is, you know, it's not the food that's an addiction, not even the sugar, it's the eating itself that becomes the addiction and what the eating gives you, you know, in the 12 step world, they or in alcohol, they say it's not the alcohol or the drugs. It's what, what it does for you on the inside, right? They're a symptom. And when people have a food issue, it's the same way. Food's a symptom to underlying issues. So when I figured that out, and then when I started doing social media, I knew we could not go back and do, well, just never play on social media. People go, I'm going on a social media blackout or an internet blackout. Well, we're going to talk about that in a moment. What if you can't, you know, much like the person that says, you know, they're a food addict. Well, you got to eat, right? And in certain instances, um, you may have to be on some social media. If you run a business, if you have a practice, uh, if sometimes you may have a regular job, your boss may email you your schedule, right? Um, I always tell the story. I had a guy here um, doing work on my house. Uh, and as soon as it was over, he says, hey, doc, can we take a picture? Click, click. You know, and I have to post it on their, their Facebook site, you know, as another satisfied customer. I'm like, sure, I don't care. And what was interesting, my business mind kicked down. I go, that's brilliant. You know, he's doing it instant feedback because he knows everybody says they'll write you a, a, a testimonial. Everybody says this. And very few people do it, but by doing that instantly, I was happy. My air conditioner was working again. You know, he took the picture. I gave him permission. He put it on that. Great. And then I started thinking he couldn't go into his boss and go, boss, I really got a problem with Facebook. I can't do that anymore. If it's part of your job, it's part of your job. Right. And it's how you connect. What if that's, you, you, you have family members, they, they're big on that and they want to connect through, you know, instant messenger, you know, so it's more like food than alcohol or drugs, and very few people approach it that way. So because to change your mind, you have to change your life. You really have to change from the inside out. If you change your mind, you change your life. And not knowing is not your fault. And so old habits die hard. That's why this is so exciting. Well, you know, so to break free, you need to have, 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 learn how to use your brain the way it actually works right? I get so excited. My, I get a little tongue tied. Uh, and what that has to do is neuroplasticity and the chemical aspects of addiction, which a lot of people don't know. You know, it's not about willpower. It's about changing from the inside out to change the relationship, which stops the neurobiological basis of it. So you don't get into the obsession and compulsion part. Very few people know that. And when I say neuroplasticity, uh, there's a saying in that world that neurons that fire together, wire together. What's that mean? Once you learn a behavior, it can become second nature, much like riding a bike. Great. So then you may not ride a bike for years. You can get on a bike and ride. It might be a little shaky at first, right? The, unlike what some people say that when they might say a uh, behavior goes extinct or you extinguish a behavior, the pathway still in your head if the right triggers get fired off. So if you're overusing the internet now, if you've trained yourself, if you've got those neural pathways, neuroplasticity pathways in your brain, it's still in there. Now you may go on a social media uh, a blackout, not use any internet for 30 days, the behavior's still in there. The minute you kick it back in, you may go, and you don't have a good relationship with it, so boom, you go back to the negative, right? So. Uh, and those triggers may pop up. Uh, so we have to train you differently. Again, much like people I've treated with that eat too much, you know, that might have a food, it's an eating addiction. Well, they got to eat. So we have to redo those triggers. We have to redo those things so they can eat normally. And I've done that for over 35 years. And I brought it to the internet and the social media world in the last few years. And you have to remember that little quick information. There's a stress hormone called cortisol. And it... <clears throat> 
it helps hardwire things into your brain. And so that's why the internet can become addictive or social media when you're under stress. <clears throat> it's an instant relief. It gives you a boost. It gives you relief, right? Because, you know, even though the behavior increases stress, your boss is yelling at you because you're online or your family, right? It, it's also the only way you know how to relieve the stress because the brain is just trying to seek relief and or pleasure, right? So the secret, it, and also when you're under stress, cortisol shuts down your memory or inhibition, but it has a need to seek relief. That's why if it's past that point, it feels like you have to, you must. It's not you want to, I would like to. It feels like I have to, I must. And that's how addiction hijacks this loop and why you keep going back. And it's not your fault. You don't know what you don't know. No one shows your way out. You're going to keep on the pathway, right? You have to rewire your brain. It's like if you only knew one way to get to a, a, your work or the mall or wherever you go, right? Well, you're going to keep using that until someone shows you maybe a more efficient way or a fun way. Or what if the way we show you is a little bit longer, but you get there without whatever the stress is, right? So, and endorphins kick in when you, uh, uh, when you have that first jolt. And that's, you know, with alcohol and drugs, maybe it's the first toke, the first hit, the first whatever it is, right? First drink. But with the internet, it's that instant feedback loop, right? And when the endorphins kick in, you almost feel invincible. It's why people say stupid shit online. The, the, the one question, you know, that we started installing people is, would you ever make a comment back to somebody you would not say to their face if they were standing right there? right? Because the other thing, the reason it's so addictive, it's remove that instant feedback, right? Would you look at somebody and say that and if you would, well, that, right? Also, is it necessary? I mean, we go through everything to change how you respond. But also think about, you know, if you do a, if you're into it, you do a post or a, or something and it goes viral, it gets the likes, the shares, it goes viral. Oh, you get a boost from it, right? Uh, as opposed to just a pure like marketer guy that does it, he of course, it feels good if something starts making him money with a viral, but it's not like when you're doing it just to do it. And it wears off, you feel guilty, shame, remorse, which causes stress, and then the cycle repeats. And again, social media and the internet feed this big time. So you'll be thrilled to know that what is who, who this has worked for over the years. Uh, people who use social media too much and want to control it because maybe they have to use it for work, uh, their you know, practice, uh, things like this. Uh, they want to control it. It also works for people that think they may have a problem and it's not that bad yet, right? It's much like, uh, you know, in the uh, traditional treatment, you don't have to wait till you get in your second DUI, lost your driver's license, your wife left you in your, or your husband or whatever, or you got fired from your job. It's good to preemptively strike this, right? If you're just tired of the cycle and want to be free, basically, if you're sick and tired of being sick and tired, being, you know, opening up Facebook to do one quick thing and four hours later, you know, when you meant to go to bed at 10 o'clock and you started doing things and you look, oh my God, it's 1.30 and you got to get up at six to go to work, yeah, da, 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 right? And if you're open to new ideas and know that this stuff is groundbreaking. So let me give you a couple of testimonials. And the way it, it was a while ago, had a guy, he got off all social media, you know, and he was in recovery from, from an addiction. And he said, I knew it was getting out of hand. So he got off all social media, he got rid of his Facebook page, got rid of, uh, you know, uh, wouldn't answer emails, basically almost got rid of his computer, but very rarely used his computer. There was only one in the house because uh, his family used it. He was, and he goes, I felt so much better. Great. Fine. Right. That people think, and a couple people, when you know, he, we were talking, he, and everybody's like, that's a good idea. And but then he called me later. He goes, uh, well, in this group, we started talking because he, he said he, want, he was starting a business. He worked for a company. And he was going to break off on his own and do that business. I'm like, great. Everybody's like, good. you know. And But I was the one who said, well, you're going to have to rethink this social media thing. I was like, why? And I'm like, because you're going to have to have a website. You're going to have to have a Facebook page. You're going to have to learn how to do some internet marketing, Twitter, Instagram, the thing you're doing. And, and a few of the people went, well, I, no, it's all word of mouth. I go, well, basically bullshit, right? So I said, you're, you're, you know, you're looking at this like an alcoholic or a drug addict. You're gonna, you think I can live, and you could, but 
live the rest of your life and never use social media. But, but if you're going to, you want to do these other things, you're going to have to use it, you know, and unless you're rich enough to hire somebody else to do all that work for you, um, you're, you know, you're, you're going to have to do it. And even if you can hire somebody else to do it for you, you may want to check it, right? Just to make sure things are flowing. So he's like, oh, I go, it's more like, and, and that's what changed how I treat people. I go, it's more like food. You know, a lot of times you get people, they say, oh, I'm a food addict. I go, eh, not technically, because you got to eat. You got to eat at least twice a day, right? It's, you have to change your relationship with the eating. Just like, you know, it's not that, you know, uh, the food is a symptom, just like alcohol and drugs are a symptom. And the social media addiction is a symptom. And so, you know, we modulated his responses to it. We built in some safeties. We did some things. And, you know, he's doing fine. And, you know, he, he's, you know, he's got his Facebook. He's got his Instagram. He's doing that. And actually, he's pretty good because he goes, there's no, anyways, there's no emotion in it. Uh, I recently, just recently, as I do this webinar right now, I just had some people call because their family, uh, they were at a big holiday. It's the holiday season as I'm recording this. And uh, they got mad because one of the family members basically disappeared and was sitting in the corner on their phone all night, didn't interact, barely wanted to come eat dinner, sat down, ate a little bit, and ran back out and was doing this, right? So they're like, what can I do to help this person? So we were talking and things like that. But then I also had uh, last year someone that called because uh, they went to a, uh, a holiday event, uh, a family function. It wasn't at the holidays. It was a holiday event, like a big wedding anniversary, if I remember right. and um, they basically did what the other person did. They went off by themselves and were just playing online. And I said, well, why? And they go, well, you know, some people started talking politics and Uncle Joe went crazy. And it was all I could do not to get in a big fight. So I thought, I'm just going to go do this. And it was a relief. And he goes, I felt better. So, so those are, uh, we reworked it. Uh, we did some things. We structured his relationship differently with it. And then guess what? He did go to a big, holiday event. I think that one, the next one was Easter. And he goes, there was Uncle Joe rattling on about the politics and some other people and they were fighting. He goes, I was fine. I was, he changed, he didn't want to instantly seek his fix, you know? And so those are a couple of quick examples. And that's the kind of thing that we can do. Now I had two choices when I started to develop this. First option was to go really cheap and try to sell as many as possible, but that wouldn't give me the incentive to stack the value. The section option was to go a little bit higher, but in exchange, I can devote more time, more resources to help people make the change so they can get the success that they want. So what I created is the no more internet addiction.com program. And what you get when you do this or you refer someone to it is 12 modules, right? Uh, you get coaching calls, you get bonus, I call it more truth. You get another bonus. Uh, and the total value, if I broke it all down, would be about $7,400. So like the coaching calls. Um, you know, when I'm coaching people one-on-one, -on -one, it's not cheap. And even if I do group calls, right, it's usually quite a bit of money. So I'm throwing in the coaching calls as a bonus for the first 30 people that buy this program. And it's about a $3,000 thing. You get hypnosis audios that's included that I'm constantly updating and putting in there. Um, and this is for the first 20 people. And these are accessible 24 seven, right? Just like the modules, right? And so if all I did was help you feel better, would it be worth it? If all I did was remove your desire to overuse social media, would it be worth it? What if, what, if all I did was stop your addiction, would it be worth it? What about to regain your self-respect? Maybe even save your life or your marriage or your job, right? And again, really, the total value, let's say, is about $7,400 if you broke it out. But I'm, I'm offering this for $497. The reason I'm doing that is I'm seeing it destroy families and relationship. I was at dinner with my wife, and we're sitting there, and there was a family, you know, in a booth over there. And uh, a, I assume it was a family, a, a, a man and a woman, husband, wife, two kids, um, one in high school, one probably junior high or first year of high school, something like that. And when they barely ever looked up from their phone, right? And 
it was fascinating to watch, right? Because, you know, they're sitting there, they, you know, and finally, the only reason I really began to notice is when the waitress was taking their order, they got, she got three of them and one person wouldn't look up their, from their phone. Finally, I think the mom finally, you reached over and pushed the phone down and said, order. And they, and I could hear him say, in a sec, now. So then, then they pick up the menu and looked at the menu, right? And they were so engrossed in that. Now they're at this, it was a pretty nice restaurant, right? So think about it. I'm seeing that all the time. You know, I'm driving here in Florida and I see these people and it's not just kids, you know, they're sitting there, they're texting, even though it's illegal, they're texting as they're driving, they're texting at the light, right? So my mission is to get this out there so people don't have to do that anymore. So you can see why others are paying me uh, like five grand for the group, group protocol. So again, what is your freedom, your self-respect, maybe even your life or your marriage or your relationship with someone else worth to you? Is it worth 100,000, 5,000, 10,000, 25K, more or less? How much would you pay to get free? And you can see why it's a good deal at $5,000, right? So, you know, again, you see this all the time. So if you get started today for just $497 or click the, and you can click the button below or just go to no more internet addiction.com, either with the hyphens or without, it'll take you to the website and you can get started. And again, you get 24 hour access, right? You get other bonuses. And if you start immediately, the reason number one, why do you want to start immediately? You get it. You start your new life now. Don't put it off. People are, I'm going to do it Monday. I'm going to do it next Friday. I'm going to start after the first of the year, right? I mean, there was research done on weight loss. It said, if you start your diet right before Thanksgiving, even if you don't do well, but then those people have tendency not gain weight through the holidays. And when the season of weight loss kicks in after the holidays, you're already well on your way. And the trick is they started immediately. So you get to start your life now. You're, and it's also, those of us trained in hypnosis and neurolinguistics and, and deep psychology understand by starting immediately, you're telling your subconscious mind, I'm serious about this. Because you say, yeah, I'll come back to it. First, you're going to forget. And when you look again, your subconscious you go, you don't want this. You're, you had the chance six weeks ago. You had the chance six months ago. And it's the things you don't do that you regret the most, right? Even if you, uh, you know, join a health club today and you don't go for a couple weeks, you've taken the first step, right? And again, you've, this is very important. You're training your subconscious mind to let you know that you're serious. And reason number two, you begin to remove your desire to live on social media, to redo your relationship. Maybe you can live forever without it, but maybe you have to just redo it. And number three is you get your life back. And so this is why I'm doing it for $497 and go to no more internet addiction.com. Now, I have to stress, you have two choices. Option number one, do nothing. Don't take this leap of faith, which is risk-free, by the way, and nothing changes, right? If nothing changes, nothing changes. Second option is pony up this small investment compared to the value you'll get in return and just give it a shot, right? So is it worth gambling a few minutes of your time to check this out? which if it does even half of what I'm claiming it'll do today on this webinar, it'll pay for itself many times over. So the real question is, are you worth it? And again, go to nomoreinternetaddiction.com, right? A tale of two people. You know, um, I was talking to somebody who was referred to me and about the problem, and they didn't change, right? They didn't change. And the thing, the sad part about me, if nothing changes, nothing changes. They didn't think the problem was that bad yet. And they had little kids. That's why I picked this picture. And um, I didn't stress hard enough. Well, you're going to pass this on to your children. Much like all the research always points to, if, a, if one or of the parents smoke, the child is, I forget, 25% more likely to smoke. If both their parents smoke, it goes up even higher. If all the people around them smoke, it's going to go up even higher. But even going back to the days when, you know, more people smoked, they, they figured out that if the parents didn't smoke or the, you know, impactful adults around this children didn't smoke, even if other people around them smoked, they were less likely to smoke. So now take that into social media, even though all their friends may be hooked on social media and the internet. And again, kids may have to be on it somewhat because a lot of your school assignments now come through 
the internet or you have to go online to do your research. It's colleges. A lot of the classes are online. So, you know, if they don't learn how to do this and if you don't know how to teach them how to do this, right? Uh, again, it's much like the family of an alcoholic. It's much more likely to continue because they don't know how to teach their children how not to do this behavior. And it was sad as opposed to someone that takes charge begins to redo their relationship with this so they can control it and they can pass on a healthier response to it. And again, if all I did was help you feel better, would it be worth it? Remove your desire to overuse or live on social media. Would it be worth it? To regain your self-control, because also this is very important. And I wanted to stress this at the end. If you don't, you begin to eat away at all your other self-control. Because you say, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to moderate my uh, Facebook, internet, whatever it is, usage. And you don't. Well, then you're, again, you're telling your subconscious mind. Uh, and you start saying, I got no self-control. I got no self-control. Because guess what happens next? Your diet goes out the window. Your exercise program goes out the window whatever else, all these things you want to change goes out the window. Because if you gain self-control in one area, and the research shows this, it gets stronger in other areas, right? So if you stop your internet addiction, would it be worth it? And again, to regain your self-respect, to save your life or to save your family, would it be worth it? So again, let me show you what to do next. Go to nomoreinternetaddiction.com and you can get started right away and we can have some fun, right? So again, you get 12 modules coaching calls, bonus things, uh, several bonuses. And again, $7,355 value for $497. And if you don't start immediately, basically you stay stuck. Nothing changes, nothing changes. You're, you're part of the herd, right? And you pass it on to future generations. And you make those people richer, right? So again, you can get started for just $497. Click the button below or go to nomoreinternetaddiction.com. So I'd like to thank you for doing this with me because it's always my pleasure. It truly is my pleasure to share this information. If I can be of help, reach out to me. Have a great day and I'll see you as we trudge the road to happy destiny.